when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oftentimes resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 8, Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Verse 9, how beautiful is that, I tell you. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for this beautiful, powerful passage of Scripture. Hide it in our hearts and help us never to forget it. And help us to never forget what Jesus did for us. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would have mercy and grace upon us. And for Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us of our sins as your Christian people. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness and fit us for your use. Fill us with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit. Reveal all things to us. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would rebuke and bind the devil and his demons and his hosts. Lord, from... Uh, every aspect of this meeting. Grant me supernatural energy, grace, anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach your Holy Word once again and have uh, fill your people with your Holy Spirit and touch the hearts of every soul who is a Christian here today to pray with me as I preach. And we pray that you will save that soul that is nearest hell and revive every Christian. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. You may be seated. And Dr. R. G. Lee, the famed pastor of First Baptist Church, Dallas, known for preaching the famous sermon, Payday Someday, which he preached uh, based upon a play a format and did it masterfully for the glory of God, said these words, the only way I know for any man or woman on earth to escape the sinner's payday on earth and the sinner's hell beyond, making sure of the Christian's payday on earth and the Christian's heaven beyond is through Christ Jesus who took the sinner's place upon the cross, becoming for all sinners all that God must judge that sinners through faith in Christ Jesus 
might become all that God cannot judge. Amen, somebody. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue in this uh, pivotal uh, passage, when Judas and his band of armed men and religious leaders arrive in the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus uh, somewhat surprises them by his straightforward identification of himself. Judas was likely surprised himself because he would have remembered all of the times the Jewish leaders had tried to have Jesus arrested, but Jesus had simply removed himself from the scene, explaining uh, to the disciples, my time has not yet come. Expecting such a reaction, Judas had calculated uh, to arrest Jesus at a time when he and his disciples were isolated, tired, and alone, when there were not any crowds around which would make it easy for Jesus to slip away unnoticed, in his mind at least, or any crowds around as witnesses. However, they did not find Jesus trying to escape from them. Rather, he stepped out to meet them as they approached. That's a man for you. Amen, somebody. It was Judas and his crowd instead of Jesus who was shocked and taken aback and surprised. When Jesus declared, I am he, those who had come to arrest him staggered backward and fell to the ground. And of course, they should have fallen to the ground because Jesus is God, uh, be that as it may. While this act demonstrated Jesus' power, even in this situation, it also had a practical effect. It prevented the armed men from seizing the disciples. When the soldiers had recovered from their shock, Jesus said, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. What a beautiful statement. Because that's basically what Jesus did for us. I'm here. I will take the punishment. Arrest me. Whip me. Accuse me falsely. Lie on me. Beat me beyond recognition. Crucify me to a tree. I am he, let these go. Amen, somebody. It is likely that the Roman soldiers in the company would not have recognized Jesus, for they were just doing their job, which was why Judas had arranged a sign by which they would know who to arrest. As you know from another passage of scripture, Judas betrayed Jesus in the worst kind of way with a kiss. Now that's a devil for you. But Jesus made it clear that he did not want any harm to come to his disciples. He made sure that none of them were arrested along with him or by accident in his place. You say, well, surely they would have known it was Jesus just by looking at him, not according to the book of Isaiah. For the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, he was not much to look upon. He was not as handsome as the pictures have depicted him. He was just a regular 
Jew in the eyes of many. Yet he was Emmanuel, God with us. By declaring, I am he, he made it clear, he made it plain that he would be the only one taken that night. You're looking for me? Okay, here I am. Let these go. Most of us would have said, who, me? It's not me. Here he is over here, over his sleep. Get him. Others would say, if you're going to take me, let's take it, take us all. We're all in this together. Come on. Jesus, Jesus had none of that. He commanded that the disciples be allowed to leave in peace. In so doing, he fulfilled the prophecy that none of those who belonged to him would be lost along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible Knowledge Commentary said, As the Good Shepherd, Jesus laid down his life for the sheep. His protection of the apostles was a perfect illustration of his substitutionary atonement. He died not only for them, but instead of them. What Jesus did for his disciples, end of quote, what Jesus did for his disciples in that moment, shielding them from the wrath that was about to fall on him, he did for everyone who believes in him for all eternity. He shielded us from the wrath of God because of our sins that we deserve. We deserve it and we deserve hell itself forever. He ensured that we did not have to experience eternal judgment. He took our place in the courtroom, bore our sentence of death, and suffered the punishment of our sins on the cross. He was arrested that night that we might go free for all eternity. Amen, somebody. I like how Ruth Huckel said it. She said, there was a man more than a man called Jesus Christ of Galilee. There was a place where Jesus prayed, a place that's called Gethsemane. There on a hill called Calvary, there stood a cross of agony. Nailed to that cross where I should be, he took my place at Calvary. And when I ask how could it be that he could care so much for me, the answer comes so tenderly, he took my place on Calvary. Amen, somebody. Dear friend of mine, I'm here to tell you that Jesus took your place on Calvary. That's good news for you. That's good news for me. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and for mine, was buried and rose again. And all you have to do is believe on him as I did some 37 years ago. For the Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shalt be saved. Just acknowledge that you are a sinner as I am. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all you have to do is believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again. For Jesus Christ said it in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Perish where? Perish in hell, but have everlasting life where? In heaven. Are you willing right now to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul from sin in hell? If so, allow me to lead you in prayer. For the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou, you, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Please pray with me right now if you want to be saved from your heart believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father God, just follow me phrase by phrase. Holy Father God, 
I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please have mercy upon me, a sinner. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins. As I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of my sins past and to follow you in the new life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Dear friend of mine, if you believed in your heart tonight that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, allow me to say a hearty congratulations on trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, for you've done the most important thing in life, and that is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to Gospel Light Society, our evangelistic site and read my pamphlet, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture.